Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Over the years, I've had a lot of people ask me how I set up my trailer, so I thought I'd do a pretty in-depth video today while I'm in the process of getting it ready for uh, another job. So I've been cleaning it out, so I thought I'd go over some of the stuff, how I set my trailer up, what my thought process was when I originally started, some of the first things I did, and then how I built around that. So one of the first things is I have these ramps that I built out of Perlin and some pipe a long time ago. And they allow me to bring my boxes in and out. So I've got two different boxes uh, that go in here. A mechanics box and then a piano box. And then when during transport, they actually stand upright right against the wall here and they're locked in place. So let me start by how I originally did this trailer. Uh, the first thing that we did was lighting. So with the lighting, I have a cord that comes down here and it's accessed under the gooseneck so you just plug an extension cord in that cord goes up and around and then it goes over to different areas of the trailer so it goes first into a light switch uh, which will feed back to all of the receptacles so we can actually flip the switch off we can leave the trailer hooked up shut the lights off uh, for 110 shore power so uh, this actually runs over and then i have it to come across and then go down into a couple more receptacles. Uh, one to power the refrigerator. I got chargers, Motorola chargers. A lot of times on job sites we're a uh, long ways from each other, so uh, we use Motorola's. Uh, the microwave, which I built a shelf for it. Now, one thing I will say is that when this is, when you're using the shore power, uh, because I have my charger set up here too, I have three DeWalt's and two Milwaukee's. Uh, during lunch and stuff like that, when we're using the microwave, uh, we'll just use the octopus. We'll just shut it off so that uh, we don't uh, trip breakers, but we can run the microwave and the refrigerator no problem uh, off of just regular 15 amp uh, shore power. And we've got some of our phone chargers in here as well. Now, when I built the shelves, which, uh, well, let's step back just a second. Up front, you'll notice that I have E track. And the E-Track is what actually holds the piano box in. So what I did is I drilled through the face of the trailer and this actually sits so that the strap is just under the lid of the box. I, I positioned it so that it would catch it correctly. So these are all bolted through. Now these are not stainless bolts. Uh, but I didn't have any at the time when I built this trailer. And so what I used was uh, just standard bolts and then on the outside we clear coated them and I can't even remember how long it's been since I built this trailer. Uh, it's been years now, but uh, we have not even a hint of rust out there on those. You'll notice uh, around the trailer in a lot of different places, uh, in this corner is actually where a bunch of my ladders stand up and get locked in place for transit. I have these clips that I put in various places to tie down a bunch of stuff. So that is where the piano box goes, and on this side is where... I had to strengthen this side, so I, I welded in some angles here in order to strengthen this E-Track. This is the side where the mechanics box will sit, and then we just use E-Track uh, e straps to lock them in place. So in the gooseneck, I have a lot of different things. So up front we have, or up top, we have a lot of our, uh, our two of our gas saws, one for concrete, one for steel. Uh, I got the DeWalt blower in there. In this fastenal box is a lot of fe specialty fasteners that you can't access until the trailer gets unloaded. But when we get to job sites, we're usually on site for anywhere from a week to uh, it could be months. So that's why this trailer is set up. Most of the hand tools and stuff are in the two boxes. They're one of the first things that come off along with the welders and all the ladders. So uh, we get a certain number of things out of the way and then we have free reign and free access to the rest of the trailer. We have fans up here, power washer hose, pressure washer hose. I got um, uh, some different come-alongs up there. Uh, a couple of electric come-alongs as well. Water hose for being able to get to water for the pressure washer. Uh, mixed fuel gas can, regular gas can, uh, small little electric heater whenever we need it. Some of this stuff is I'm cleaning things up, so we also carry uh, stuff to cook with and you know, just a little extra stuff. We got uh, paint guns over here, one for touch up and one main one uh, up front. I don't know if you can see it back there, but I have an oil can that's for pipe threading. 
have a digital uh, level here. The one of the stands for transit and laser. Up top, I have some of the hoses and stuff for my uh, paint guns. And then I made a special place for the pressure washer gun to sit up in here so it locks in place during transit. And the way I did that, just add a quick connect and it just sits on the top there. So that works out really, really fantastically. Now with the shelves for the gooseneck, I welded them into the sidewall and they float on the front end. So I just use two by fours. Uh, that's one of the things with a trailer. There's a lot of movement going down the road. So you want to keep it you notice on the on my shelves when I turn around here that they're not they don't go all the way to the top. They're mounted to the floor and to the sidewall only because if you don't, uh, you'll eventually end up cracking out welds. And this has been I want to say eight years since I built this trailer. Over here, I've got several ladders that will stand up here when we're all done. On this side, we have uh, brooms. I also have one that I keep over here. Brooms, squeegees. Uh, we have all of our harnesses. Uh, hickey bars are over here, uh, pipe swage, or excuse me, cable swage. I keep, uh, I have built rack here for transfer shovels, for a floor scraper and a spade. And this is uh, one of the things that I built into the shelves. This is actually my uh, annular drill, magnetic drill. And so I built a special place just for it to house and it works really well in there. Now, when I built these shelves, what I did was I had three main stuff, three main things that I had to make sure tucked in there and cleared so that during transit or when we get to a job site, those are things that we don't necessarily take out right away. Uh, and so I didn't want them to be taking up aisle space. So I built the shelves first for my MIG welder to make sure it cleared in there, the vacuum and the pressure washer, which is down below. Now in a number of places, uh, once you get the main components, or the way my philosophy was, once I got the main components in here, then I kind of just did work, found places wherever I could to hang things. So here we have the pipe threader, down below is the pipe cutter. On the shelves, there's a lot of stuff. There, most of them are labeled out. So we have uh, different pipe fittings, electrical fittings, blast room supplies, which is what we do. I originally put welding hoods up there. That shelf is kind of a miscellaneous shelf now because we built a rack on the top for hanging uh, face shields and, and welding helmets on that side. Uh, different boxes, drill doctor, uh, uh, transit, uh, dies, uh, taps and dies, uh, electrical screwdriver set, a number of different things uh, go in there. Uh, have a couple of boxes back here with specialty fasteners in them as well. Uh, chalk lines, uh, big chalk lines, grease, uh, thinner for paint, and then spray paints. Along this shelf, I have my all my welding uh, rods and stuff. On the very top, paint supplies, hard hats. Uh, I also keep my work boots up there until we get to the job site. So uh, some of the main things that I built, like with the shelf, uh, one of the first, I built these before I even made or even had the trailer ready to go. Uh, so I, and the reason I put mine on hinges, I'll just say this right now is I know a lot of people use it, don't, don't like to, or excuse me, I said hinges, I meant uh, drawer slides. Uh, the reason I'm used those instead of some of the passive stuff that other people make is because at the time that I built this trailer, or right around the time I built this trailer, I was actually changing out all the drawer slides in my kitchen for soft clothes. And so I had all these extra drawer slides and I just decided to put them to use here. In this drawer, I have my tower lights, a bunch of other lights as well, and I also keep the uh, small uh, tripod there, which is for the laser over here. So on this top drawer, I have laser. I actually have a DeWalt and a Bosch in there. On this one, we have bandsaw, skill saw. Uh, that's a die grinder that sits in there, and then the replacement uh, blades for both of those tools in the same drawer. Over here, uh, this is drills and impact drivers as well as a couple of accessories that go along with them. The next one down is, uh, this is where we put all of our batteries in transit. We just found it easier to take all the batteries out, store them in one place. And I have my uh, Milwaukee half inch uh, electric uh, ratchet in there as well. And then the next one down, uh, 
couple of multi-tools, which I get a lot of use out of on job site, uh, jigsaw and sawzall, as well as all the blades and everything for all of that stuff. Next one down is grinders and uh, cutoff tool. Uh, we use electric grinders or cordless grinders all over the place. So I also keep, there's certain things that I keep corded versions of too. So we have two corded grinders that, that stay in the main box as well as uh, corded impacts as well. Up top, we have all of our different impact drivers. Next one down, uh, it's kind of miscellaneous. We have a couple of, uh, uh, of shears. I have a couple of specialty squares. I'm gonna be adding some more, some of my more specialized tools in here, layout stuff will go in this drawer. Uh, this is actually not mine. One of my guys bought this Bluetooth speaker, but uh, he ended up leaving it. So I don't know, I guess it stays. Down here is just miscellaneous. So I have extra welding gloves, regular gloves. I got, uh, oh, markers, uh, uh, replacement shields and stuff for the, for, uh, for the welding hood, stuff of that nature. Uh, down on the bottom, I use these small army boxes to uh, house a lot of the more common fasteners that we use. So uh, we use everything from from quarter inch to half inch is mostly the biggest that we're usually using. So those are all kind of separated down there. And you'll notice on the shells, when I built the shells, like I mentioned before, they're welded. So it might be hard to see on this one, but they are actually welded into the sidewall. And then on the bottom, uh, I left these this base open so that I can get that stuff out very easily. But you'll notice that there's angle iron, and now that angle iron actually goes through and it is bolted into the uh, to the floor of the trailer. Uh, same thing along all the shelves, and I kind of built uh, the shelving, put the boxes locations first, and then built the shelving and stored all that stuff. Uh, like earlier, I showed you where all my uh, charging stations are. Well, we just add a little shelf. This is a grill that we carry it needs to be cleaned up. Uh, we also have another little one that we use once we get the job site. Uh, we have a little command that we put on there for heating up tortillas, stuff like that. On the other side, I have, uh, like I mentioned before, we have where we put our welders, our welding helmets and stuff. I built this rack here, which uh, to house tapes. So basically I just had a flat bar with two flats coming out. I put a bar through them and then bent that bar so that all the tape would, as the trailer's in motion, it, it all comes to the center so nothing falls out of there. I built a rack for my uh, four foot levels that sits here. This is a specialty thing that I built a long time ago. What this is, is it allows me to take the tubes of the welding rods here, send that upright, a place for a hammer, uh, a uh, place for a chipping hammer and then on the front side there's actually a hook to put a bunch of clamps so that goes up and i hook that over the edge of scissor lifts because we do a lot of work at at height and so that allows you to have that stuff kind of uh so that's not on the floor of the scissor lift which works out great uh the rack here this one has a lot of stuff in it and a lot of this i you also have to be conscious of making weight distribution so because the shelves have a lot house a lot of stuff and then you know this the weight that's over here kind of offsets that so you got to be conscious of that kind of thing when you're putting trailers together this thing has a lot of stuff in it so up front up top is cleaning supplies we got hand towels uh, face mask uh, different types of cleaners that are up there hand cleaner the rack in here uh, houses, uh, I got a two leg spider chain, four leg spider chain, various chains, uh, plate dogs. Uh, we got uh, chain come alongs, chain hoist. We got K bars in here. I also have a small wrecking bar and then a large wrecking bar that are built uh, down at the bottom. They kind of just slip in there. So to get them out, all you got to do is lift them up, pull them out, they come out nice and easy. On this side, this is one of the best things that I built. Uh, well, let me step back. Now, I told, I told you when, whenever we build the main stuff, then we go in and kind of find places to hang stuff. That's how the pipe wrenches uh, ended up in the position that they are. It's also how the little shovel, uh, large crescent wrench, uh, got mixer for the paints, uh, stuff of that nature. So that all that stuff was kind of built after the fact. 
we got the main stuff in and then just put stuff where it would be easily accessible but uh, not in the way or interfere with us being able to go in and out of the trailer. Uh, on this rack, which I, I don't know, we got a roll of toilet paper up there for some reason, uh, this is my grinder rack. And one of the things I keep on here too that I have lately is my uh, slide hammer. But we also have electrical tape, which I'm short on, tie wires, the guards for the grinders. Uh, we got Teflon tape, stuff of that nature. That rack is really, really useful. Keeps all of that stuff easily accessible. At a moment's glance, I can see what what we're short on, what we need to get, and it keeps it off the shelves. Over here, we have the racks for, uh, so th there's all kinds of stuff in here. We got ropes, uh, extension cords. We got 220 or 240 extension cord. We got welding lead extensions and uh, hoses. Now all this stuff, when in transit, uh, I bungee all this stuff off with various different bungees, including the shelves down here. So I've got clips that go from top to bottom that keep those from, from uh, sliding out on us. Uh, on this rack, you'll notice, uh, you know, like I said, little stuff that we added in here. This is just simple PVC. This holds our, our uh, caulking guns. Uh, I got safety equipment, so face shield, replacement stuff, uh, safety uh, caution tape, danger tape. Uh, they go up there. Various different lubricants, various different sealants, uh, oils uh, for engines. Uh, some of the stuff we just kind of have to find places for, like like this pump armor. That is for the paint guns. Whenever you get them all cleaned up, you put pump pump armor in them to uh, keep the seals fresh. Uh, I got to find a better place or better mount uh, for fire extinguisher uh, eventually I'll get to it uh, underneath here we have the spare on top there we have uh, an easy jack for it this is a specialty bar that I've put in place and I've actually got the welder out right now because I just added this this is part of the slide hammer so that's to be able to weld on the end of shafts slide hammer goes on there gives a stopper so you can uh, it, uh, retract or extract shafts that are frozen in. Uh, I built a small stand here for the uh, mechanics box or the or the uh, toolbox. Uh, I just recently got this. This was on a video not long ago. Uh, new grease gun in here. Right now, I just have some various stuff in there. Got drill bits, extra uh, uh, locks, uh, some safety stuff that as soon as we get to the next job site, I'm passing out to the guys. Well, I better leave that open or I won't be able to get to this stuff. Uh, here, I got various electrical stuff. And this one is ratchet wrenches. And this one is uh, bearing pullers. Down here, this one, we kind of built some stuff in here. So we got heat gun, various different strapping stuff, uh, hose clamps, just a lot of different things. On this side, we have our electrical stuff and I got like these are the filters for my air compressor replacement air filters uh paint guns that go in here and some of the accessories the cleaning accessories as well on this one we have various electrical tools i also featured this one not long ago this is a uh, rigid uh, reamer for conduit works out fantastic uh, fish tape stuff of that nature and on the very top, I have uh, just uh, accessory stuff that we change out. So like these are for the replacements for the cutter on the, the rigid cutter, uh, replacements or extras of the nozzles for the uh, pressure washer. These are replacement jaws for the rigid cutter. Just a lot of different miscellaneous stuff that we use from time to time that we have to replace. On this side, uh, well, we got refrigerator in here. Uh, this is great to have on a job site. Uh, so you're not having to, you know, house everything within uh, ice boxes and stuff. So we usually have access to shore power uh, whenever we get to a job site. And when the uh, occasions that we don't, and I know I'm not going, to, I have a small compressor, or excuse me, a small generator that I take along that is plenty to power uh, anything that we need in here, especially for the chargers, which is the most important. This is uh, the rack that I have for my... Uh, or the stand that I have for my Hypertherm PowerMax 45, which we use a lot for sheet metal cutting. It actually has a lock mechanism back here, so it locks in during transit, and then an extra dolly that locks in by strap. 
Over here uh, on this rack, uh, right beside where the ramps will stand up, are all of my uh, rigging straps uh, that are not chain or cable. And the extension cord, this is the extension cord we leave out here close to the end. So this is the one we hook up for shore power when we get to a job site. Uh, up top, I have a mount for my six foot level. And first aid kit is over here. Uh, extra shelf, I got Milwaukee lighting that stands up there. These are the ladder racks uh, for the main extension ladder. So when it comes in here, it hooks down on there and then uh, that keeps it out of the floor. So there's a lot of other stuff. I'm gonna take uh, a small video of once everything is loaded up in here. Uh, so down here on the floor, we added these D-rings in here. This is the, and these are actually the straps that hold in the uh, engine-driven welders. I got two Lincoln 305Gs. Uh, so we got the box. Our compressor just sits on the floor here. Uh, welder here, and then welder there. Mechanics box over here. And that leaves the rest of the aisle way free for uh, luggage and stuff that we're carrying with us. I do have, like I mentioned before, I have uh, three different ladders that hook together and stay right here. And I got one that actually goes against this wall and it bungees in uh, against here. So we're able to uh, jam pack a lot of things in here. And uh, you kind of, well, at least I do. As you get something new, a new tool, you got to find places for it, which is what I was doing today and had this welder out. I just, like I said, just made a, a small mount for for the slide hammer uh, rod. So, oh, these up here. So these mounts are what you see on electrician's trucks. I put those up there. Uh, the houses, we got extra conduit uh, on one side and then uh, unistrut on the other. So I've made that just a little over 10 feet so I could set 10 foot pieces on. And there's enough clearance up the front that I can extract those things, get them out for whenever we need them. Uh, in front of the wheel wheel on this side, I actually built this so that it has a hinged door. Down here I have my Trojan saw horses as well as the uh, 2x4s for them. We got jacks, uh, hydraulic jacks that are down here and some, spe some just some various rod that uh, I got to find a better place for, but for right now I just set it on top. So when we get to the job site, that's another thing that comes out right away. We set up our saw horses out on location. We also carry a couple of extra of, uh, uh, lifetime plastic tables. One of them is for like for our grill and everything. Once the trailer is cleared out of here, we set it up over here. So we basically have a little station here. We'll put a coffee maker, uh, our grill will set here, and then some of the you know grill accessory stuff to get it off of this area. And let's see if I'm missing anything. Uh, I think that pretty well does it for for the main trailer before everything gets packed in here. Oh, well, I do have on the bottom there, inside of that uh, uh, that bucket down there is actually a sump pump with the hose and everything that goes along with that. So I hope you're able to garner some ideas for how to set your trailers up. Uh, I always get steel trailers uh, because of the fact that I can weld into the sidewalls. You just gotta be cognizant of wherever the electrical lines come down for the trailer themselves that you don't burn into the wiring. Uh, with aluminum trailers, they, they don't have near as strong as stiffeners. And I had an aluminum trailer once, uh, my very first one, and man, did it make a mess of things over the course of about three or four years. It was in bad shape because the, the uprights for it are just not strong enough. With a steel trailer, everything is steel. And, you know, I don't have to deal with the plywood being bolted onto it, stuff like that. So it really, for my, for my purposes as a millwright, it works out a lot better. Well, let me get everything back in here now. And uh, if there's anything that caught your eye that I missed or didn't explain or how or reasoning for it or whatever, just give me a shout and uh, I'll be happy to let you know how, why we did something a certain way or, or, uh, you know, just any kind of explanation that you need on it. So, uh, let me get this thing put back together. And I'll get you some pictures of how this trailer looks when it is locked and loaded.
Okay, so I've got both of my boxes in here now, as well as the ladder, so I want to show you kind of how it's starting to look. Uh, ladder rack for the large ladder up top, front box. Haven't locked this one in because I want to go through it just a little bit. I do have a video on this box, though, uh, that I've done, and I'll link to it here if you're interested in how I set up the tools in here. So we've got uh, ladders on the side, compressor that goes here. I've got a couple of... Uh, One's underneath and one is up here, just some uh, rolling carts that we made to transport stuff on the job site and then one of our other ladders over here. So with this box, uh, you notice on top it has mount section here and then it has one for the vise over here. So this one over here is actually uh, for the pipe vise and they reside up top here. So pipe vise there and then the winch, or excuse me, the hitch uh, right there so that we are able to uh, Immediately when this goes onto the job site, we set both of those up. Down below we have chop saw and dry cut saw. On the other side is all drawered and most of these uh, pretty just regular hand tools. So we got screwdrivers in here, Allen wrench sets, both T handle and standard metric uh, regular ones. Uh, combo squares, uh, excuse me, combo squares, torpedo levels, uh, some various other squares as well. Uh, we got uh, more common drill bits that we use, more, most common uh, taps and dies that we use. We got utility blades as well as uh, replacement blades for those. A couple of specialty things. We got chain brake in here, reamers in the back. Uh, on this one is pliers, which I need to throw in. Uh, my knippics in here as well. So we get those set up. I actually have a few more that need to go in there before I lock this in. Down here, I made uh, some dividers for this one. So this has breaker bar, files, uh, longer bars, scrapers, chisels, center punches, uh, various different uh, ratchets and sockets that we, we use a lot of. These are basically just extras out of old sets. Uh, speed squares down in this one. And the lower one is wraparounds, uh, chalk line, um, plumb bobs and string lines and then down on the very bottom is where we have our uh, framing squares so let me go ahead and set this one up and we'll get this one locked in I'll show you how all it looks when all this is strapped in okay so now we have that box uh, locked in place and uh, it's ready to bring the two welders down the aisle there's just enough room where they'll roll in there then we'll strap those up and then the very last thing is I have a forklift attachment that we carry with us from job to job, which is right here. We'll get that set up, locked in place, and then the trailer will be ready to go. Okay, now the welders are in place. Uh, well, boxes, compressor, welders, ladders. I uh, got a small table and large table that we just kind of throw in there wherever. Uh, it doesn't really hurt anything there. So the last thing that uh, I have to do is to make sure that I get the forklift attachment in here. I got all of the bungees on all the drawers. Oh, I missed one. I got to get it on this drawer. As well as on this toolbox as well so nothing shifts around in transit and the refrigerator. So let me uh, get that bungee on. We'll get the mule loaded up and the trailer should be good to go. Okay, so we got everything in now. Uh, the mule's in. I use a, a clamp with a board just to kind of keep it from shifting back and forth. Up front, we tie on a come along to it. And everything is locked in place and ready to go. So we're off to Alabama to do a job. We'll probably be out there about six weeks or so. And uh, once we get on site, we'll empty out everything, the boxes, the toolboxes, uh, excuse me, the toolboxes, the welders, tables, the mule, um, the ladders, and then we'll have free access on the trailer and we'll be good to go. So I hope you guys get a better idea, or some of my ideas anyway, of how I put this trailer together. And maybe you can garnish something that works for you. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next one.